right guys, so this is our template that we will be scanning in. I've basically gone back and just double checked to make sure all of my um, sides are square, all of my measurements are equal in the corners and the distances and all the cross hash marks. Since I'm doing this and it's gonna be a template for other drawings, I wanna make sure it's pretty accurate. The goal of this project is to have a ready, a digital template ready whenever I wanna do another drawing in this series. I've drawn lots of drawings in this style. I did a bear. The reason I took it down is because it looked too similar to a reference photo that I drew it from. And so I'm gonna do a totally different drawing. It's gonna be a bear, but just so it's totally different so I don't feel uh, guilty or get sued. But mostly I feel guilty. But I have done a fox, I've done a mouse. There's a mouse. That guy. Deer, a horse, and what else? A cow, but the cow's crooked, so it looks bad in a frame, which is why I'm going to redraw it once I have this template uh, digitally drawn in Metabank. So that's kind of the idea here. It's gonna be a time saver for me in the future, and it gives you guys, if you're new to digital art, a resource to learn from. These are the basics. I am all basically self-taught because there's no videos out there on how to do this, so it might be helpful. Uh, Metabang Paint is, as far as I know, it's free. You might have to make an account to do some of the other features in it, but it's totally uh, open source material. Anyway, that's enough talk. My hair probably looks terrible anyway, so let's get started. All right, change of plan. My paper's too big. I'm gonna have to cut it down. Make sure I don't cross my line, but cut off about a quarter of an inch. Make sure that it is square. Does it fit in there? Not really. That's okay, we're gonna make this work. Okay, let me turn my AC off, just for you guys. I went through and I just went with my Micron pen, like a size one, and just oh, drew over all my hash lines so that I can see them all. Oh, and I also put uh, black dots at each corner of the outside border part, because that's all I need to make a square. So let's go ahead and File, new, scan. Um, photo. Is photo the default? Okay, let's try photo this time because maybe it won't tilt it a little bit then. PNG, like 600. This is taking a lot longer than I thought it would. And waiting for a scan. Waiting for a scan. Oh, it's way better. Okay, good deal. Image seven. Types. I keep saying type when I mean click. You're gonna click save. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and save this somewhere and then I will catch up with you guys back in Metabang Paint. All right, so I think we're coming into uh, quite a bit of a problem. So now the recorder is off and my computer is not recording the screen anymore. It's just metering paint open. And as you guys can see, now it draws. I think putting it to low, nope, that did nothing. Okay, we're just gonna have to do it with the camera, guys. All right, guys, and we're going. So you're now on my um, Rebel TI T5i with a lapel mic. So this is what we have to work with. So I hope you're happy. All right, guys, we're gonna go right into Metabank Paint. I'm exiting out of the two ads that usually pop up. You're gonna go to the top left to File. You're gonna go to Open. And you'll find where your scan was. If I can click on it. Goodness, and there we go. And it will open it right up in uh, Metabank. So the first thing we're gonna do, um, at least on my uh, tablet, so this pen has this stylus and has a button here, all right? There's one, and that is another click. If I hold this down and move it in one direction across my pad, it will zoom in. Let me show you right here. If I move in, you can kind of see that. So that's how I'm zooming in and out. I'm holding down the front part of this button and zooming in. Uh, that way on the screen. 
and we're back. So over here, you can see over here, there's like a picture of a page with the dog ear. Click on that. You'll notice up here, it adds another layer. All right, here's layer one, layer two. Layer two has the square box with like the checkerboard pattern in it. And that is our transparent or blank layer. All right, so here's our first layer. And that's just our image. And these little dots on the side select which ones are on. So now both layers are on and the first layer is highlighted. What I'm gonna to wanna to do is have both layers on and have the second layer highlighted. And what this allows me to do is I can now go in to my first layer, all right, this one. And this also, um, <clears throat> and the, the one that's highlighted is the one that you're drawing on, all right? So now my layer two is highlighted and that's my transparent layer but I can draw right on top of my first layer. Let's just do a little example. All right, now you can see my new drawing and the hash lines from my scan. But now I can go and I can click the dot on layer one, and that makes my first layer or the, the, the image that we've imported into MetaBank disappear. And that leaves just my, my second layer. And that's basically what we're gonna do to make this background template, is we're gonna have both layers um, turned on with the dots here with the second layer or the transparent layer highlighted. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure throughout your drawing that you're only drawing on that second layer, otherwise it's gonna screw up uh, at the end when you go to delete the first layer and then part of your drawing disappears. So make sure that you're always drawing on the second layer. You can also rename these, I believe, right here. So I can change this layer two to, let's do something like main layer. And then we'll change our first layer to scan. So this way we know that layer one is the scan and layer two is our main layer that we're gonna be drawing on. So that way we don't get them mixed up. And what I just did there is, is the undo button. So I can go ahead and back. So I don't know what the keyboard shortcut for messing up is, but if I accidentally get a line wrong, I can hit that back button however many times I need to. I think it goes like 20 or 30 times, and then I can get back on track uh, right where I wanna be. So right now, you can see that my pen is changing size by pressure. And you can see over here, the pen tool is highlighted. If you double click on that, it opens up your pen window. Now, since I'm doing line work and I want all my lines to be consistently, uh, the, well, the same thickness, I'm gonna deselect size by pressure. You can also either type in the pixels of your tool or you can just use a slide bar. I usually use a slide bar. But one thing that is helpful is in your drawing, if you're using different size lines, either write on a piece of paper or a document in your computer, the different sizes or pixel numbers for your different width lines and where you use them. So if you wanna use them in the future, or if you forget halfway through your drawing what size lines you were using and you want it to look consistent, you can refer to that later. So now with the size by pressure off, now it just draws a consistently thick line. Now for what I'm doing here, use the undo button, I want straight lines. I don't need any curvy lines. So what I'm going to do is first, this tool is too big for me to draw accurately. So we're gonna double click on the pen, if I can, and we're gonna shrink that down, and that window shows you how big it's gonna be uh, in real life on screen. So I'm gonna go ahead and just tap where I want the end of my first line to be, okay? And now we're gonna use that scrolling thing that I showed you guys to scroll out and in to the end of where I want my line to, to be. And this is gonna, um, and I'll teach you guys a trick on how to draw a straight line. So what you're gonna do is take your stylus, all right? And you're gonna go to your keyboard and hold down shift. All right, I'm pressing shift right now. And as I'm pressing shift, I'm just gonna go to where I want the end of my line to be and just click it once. And now I'm gonna let go of shift, all right? 
And when we zoom out, you guys will see that we have a perfectly straight line. All right, now shift is a keyboard shortcut to draw all your lines in this way. Again, we're gonna come here. We don't have to hit it again, because shift already is locked onto that position. But we can, if you wanna get a little more accurate or change where your line is. All right, come to our third point, hold down shift, and you can see that little cursor line following my stylus around. Click. All right. Now we have the second side of our border, and we'll go back in, and I'm using that scrolling uh, function of the stylus. Now it's gonna depend on whatever tablet you have. Like I said, I got mine for free, and apparently it's a very good quality tablet. I didn't know it was so expensive. But there we go. And as you use your scrolling, um, and maybe you get a little of that on there, just use your backspaces, get back to where you want. All right, now all the time, oop, just bumped the camera. So during that whole time, we were drawing on layer two right here. Now, can we get in focus a little more? So now what we can do is go to our little selectors here, deselect layer one, and that's what we got. Just a perfectly square box. And that is the technique we're gonna use, just drawing on our second layer, not the original layer, so that we can deselect the scan so that it just leaves our drawing behind. So those are really the basics of MetaBang. Um, there are a lot of different tools. I primarily use the pen tool. I don't know a whole lot about the others, guys. I'm sorry, but the, this is really just the basics. But one thing I will show you guys how to do um, just before I just before I go ahead and finish this template, uh, is we'll go to the color windows. Now all this is customizable. Like you can grab them and drag them wherever, but I messed it up one day and couldn't figure out how to get it back. So I D and then reinstalled MetaBank Paint so it went back to the regular settings. But anyways, you'll go here to the little color palette button. You hit that and that brings up your color window. All right, and the preview here it gives you three color options. This is transparent and it allows you to draw a transparent anywhere on your layers. And then it gives you two pre-programmable or customizable color uh, swatches, splotches up here. And so I want to have a black and a white because that's what I'm gonna be dealing with, but actually just black and the rest is gonna be transparent. But let's just have a white on there uh, just in case. So we're gonna select the color we wanna change right here, which is blue. Then hit the color palette, and then it gives you all these options for colors. All right, and one handy tool is the pick screen color, which allows me when I hit that button, you can see this box down here changes to wherever the X on the screen goes to pick that color, which is really nice. I used it the other day. I was doing like a, like a fake blueprint thing. And so I just took my window up here, put it on the right side, took uh, Google Chrome, put it on the left side, and pulled up an image. And this allows you to, when you open the paint color, pick custom color, to anywhere on your screen, right? Even on my editing program, I can pick the, uh, the logo color for Wondershare for Mora, or I pick the, the blue of the blueprint color, and I can bring that right in to my MetaBank Paint program which is really, really cool. If you're doing like some parody uh, logos, like some like the Onion or Babylon Bee type stuff and you need to match colors specifically, you can use that as well. And so you guys can see that now my uh, one of two color swatches is now like a, well, the Filmora logo color. Same thing, if I tap it once, it switches to the other color and I've only got two there. I'm not sure if you can get more. That might be customizable, but I'm not sure. All right, and again, if we open that up, these are all custom colors that I have made. And the way that you make a custom color is you select anywhere on this grid a color. Let's say I wanted to make, uh, let's say I'm drawing a tree, all right, as an example, and I need a brown. All right, now I can take this anywhere on this uh, color palette to find a brown that I really like. All right, so let's drag it around here. I don't even know where brown would be. Say here, all right. 
So this gives you the color of where your X is specifically, and then it gives you the slider so you can vary the, the darkness of that color. So if I say, okay, I want that for my bark, all right? We're just gonna click on this and drag it over to our custom color grid, all right? And that will lock in that color in that square. All right, now let's say, oh, I want this green for the trees. All right, I want a light green. Again, click and drag, bloop. And I want a dark green. Click, drag, bloop. And so using this, if you're, like, maybe you're trying to make your own comic strip, you can pre-select the colors that you want for the theme of your comic. Or if you're doing like something like a design for the 4th of July and you want red, white, and blue, but in a certain color scheme, you can pre-select those. So then I can come out here, choose one of my color swatches, click the painting palette and come select it. Hit okay. And now I have got two custom colors, brown and green, so I can draw my tree. All right. And again, undo button is uh, extremely forgiving in that area. So, um, a lot I don't use a lot of these other tools on the side. The little hand is useful if you're trying to orient the page. You're just going to select it, and it lets you grab and drag your uh, your layers around. This is an eraser. All right and it will let you erase your work. I don't use that a whole lot. I just use the back button quite a bit. Um, what else? The paint tool. All right, this lets you paint large portions of your drawing colors from your color uh, palettes or pre-selected colors. And also shapes lets you draw um, squares that you want certain colors. But those are really uh, the basics, guys. Maybe one other tip, let's go back. One other tip that might be useful is up in the top right, gives, the, gives you the view of your uh, image, okay? So the red represents what you see in your viewfinder. You see I scroll into the top right. This tells me, in the grand scheme of things, where I'm looking at exactly. It tells me I'm at the top right. So that's helpful. I get really detailed sometimes and I might get lost to where I'm at. That up there will tell me exactly where I am in my image. And then these two rotation buttons, left and right, looks like it's just off screen, right there, left and right, allows me to rotate my drawing. Let's, let's draw something on here so you guys can see it better. North, south, east. West. All right, so it allows me to rotate it left or right, and then in the center, wherever I'm at, we'll return it to, uh, to, to its true orientation. And this is helpful. Let's say if I'm, I do lots of lines. So if I'm drawing lines here, do lots of cross, hatch, uh, cross hatching lines, and okay, I'm done, and I wanna look at the whole picture, I hit that center button, zoom out and it lets me see in the grand scheme of things what I'm looking at. And so once you are done with whatever you're doing in MetaBang, um, you're going to want to make sure that you select your layer so that the layer you want to export is the only one showing. If I was to export this now, it would make a photo with my scan along with my drawings overlaying it. But if you just want what you're drawing is to be what is saved. You want to deselect your original scan or image so that just your drawing is what remains. This is a technique I use in all of my drawings that I make on MetaBank. And like I said, I'm not a professional. I'm sure there's a lot of people out there watching this now who know a lot more. If you do have any other tips that maybe will help me draw faster, help people trying to learn how to draw on MetaBank Paint, I'll learn better. Please drop those in the comments below. I'll try to answer as many questions and discuss as much as I can down there. But once you are ready to export your image, you'll just go to the top left, hit File, 
save or save as. I usually do save as. And right now it's saved as a MetaBank Paint Pro MVP. I'm not sure what that stands for, but you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you select a PNG, which is just gonna be an image file. So you'll just save that and it will save the image to your file. And that's really the basics on, uh, on MetaBank Paint. And that's it for me, guys. Yeah, I got a haircut. It's the next day. If you have any questions I might be able to answer, drop those in the comments below. Any tips, tricks that you might know that I don't know, drop those in the comments. Also, try and help the guys who are getting started on um, MetaBang if you're watching this video. I just wanted to pop in here at the end and say all the drawings you saw at the beginning or near the beginning of this video are available on Society6. I'll leave a link for those in the description. If you like the video, please give it a like. It's free. It doesn't cost anything as well as subscribing. Liking and subscribing helps others see the videos that I make and it's going to help my channel grow. If you've liked and subscribed already and want to help even more, I do have a Patreon page where you can support me monthly on there. I'll leave a link to that in the description as well. Anything else? What else do I got? Oh yeah, I'm leaving for Canada in two days. I'll be up there for one week. I'll be taking some really cool drone footage and some vlog footage. And those are the videos that I'll be making. I might make one or two once I, there's a mosquito in here. I'll be making a couple videos on that once I get back in a week. So that's why you're getting two videos this week and you won't have a video next week, but then you should have two videos when I come back. Or at least one, no, just one. And that's it. That's all I can think of. Nothing else. This video has already been too long, so get out of here. I was faking the whole time. There's nothing going on in these headphones.